Hey, Facebook and everyone on Product Launch Hazards podcast. I am going live today with Michelle Barnum-Smith, and I'm so excited to bring her to you because I heard her speak in Hong Kong last October. We were both there speaking um, at the event, and it was, she just had me. I was like, I'm not a huge Facebook fan. I really don't love Messenger, but her stats are undeniable. So she's coming on here today to talk about what she's done, what she does, but particularly oriented to product launching and how successful this more intimate level of, of marketing can be. So thanks, Michelle, for joining me today. <laughs> thanks, Tracy. Thanks so much for having me. Good to see you again. Yeah. Since the last time I saw you, we were highly jet lagged and... <laughs> I didn't know where I was, so I'm glad it still came across. Oh, no, you, you were great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I was like, I was a day earlier, so I think I was really exhausted, but I, I think I was on adrenaline, so it worked out. <laughs> yeah, there you, go. there you go. That's how that always is. So, you know, why don't you just give a little bit of background? I mean, you've got an amazing bio, and I could just sit here and read it, but I want, I want to hear it from you. So, I mean, you, how did you get started in this marketplace and to, into product launching and supporting that from a marketing standpoint? Yeah, absolutely. So I've been doing marketing for over 18 years and, you know, I do moisturize, but, um, <laughs> and I've had, you know, it, it, I had a whole corporate career before I started doing my own thing and, and transition from, you know, a working woman to a working mom and building my own business and my own brand. And, um, and, and a couple of years ago, I came across what I call the beginnings of Facebook messenger for businesses or messenger marketing campaigns. And I was like, oh my my gosh, this is so sexy. This is the future of marketing because it's so messenger, as you know, as most people know, it's, it's conversational, right? right? You're having an interaction, an interactive experience with another person. And so now that businesses can have those, those similar kind of interactions, some live chats in real time, like in, in, in the form of customer service and support or automated marketing, like in the form of messenger automations and messenger bots. Um, that's like a, you know, super buzzy term. What are bots? It's, it's basically automated, automated marketing. Right. right. And, uh, and so when I started kind of getting into it and seeing the capabilities, it was just like, this is, this is totally the future of, of, of this type of interactive marketing. We already know that email is kind of this, you know, you got to do it, but nobody really likes getting email. Well, I but, hate email. <laughs> right, right, yeah. exactly. And so the more and more that I learned about Messenger, the more I knew that, you know, that this could be like such a huge opportunity for any type of business, because that's really what it comes down to is that you know, any business can use Facebook Messenger, but especially for e-commerce, you know, whether you're selling direct or you're selling through Amazon, it's a massive opportunity to be able to use Messenger marketing for your business. So, so now you, so you've had 18 years of marketing experience and I guarantee you that that's, there was a lot of old school stuff that you still apply, totally but, right. um, but there's a lot that doesn't work nowadays. And there's a lot that we've had to throw out <laughs> in from a product <laughs> launching standpoint. Did you always have product marketing experience? Was that kind of your thing already or was it just general marketing experience? Well, I came from a high tech background. So I, I've worked with and for, you know, many of the fortune 100, as well as some of the most massive companies in the world, like China Telecom and Vodafone. And when I worked in corporate, we were always, of course, we were always doing product launches, not to consumer, but you know, more B2B. Um, but like you said, marketing, marketing is this, I don't know, this, this area of business is constantly changing, guaranteed in the conversation in the last five minutes, there's some new marketing tool that's probably popped up. And, you know, I, I, oh, I we're going to talk about one towards the end. Cause I, you know, I didn't prep you for that, but we're going to totally talk Instagram. Oh, it's up and coming, right? It is. Okay. It see, is. so we're baiting you all. You have to listen to the end now. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. But I joke with my, um, you know, one of my friends is runs an accounting firm and I was like, listen, accounting hasn't changed in like what, like 1600 years, you know, since the Chinese. That's why they call it generally accepted accounting principles. Right, right? <laughs> right. Exactly. Whereas like with marketing, you know, like it's, it changes constantly. It's changing all the time. It's new and adapting and, and growing. And so from a marketing professional standpoint, I'm not a, I'm not an expert in marketing, like, because how could you ever be, there's too many avenues. There's too many, you know, right everything. But, you know, my focus is specifically messenger and how to leverage that for, you know, e-commerce and, you know, product launches included in that when you have something new and how to build an audience to be able to get it out there and drive revenue. Right. 
Right. So let, let's set up a little bit and then I want to dive into those numbers. And, sh and Michelle has a few slides for us to, she can really show you the numbers because like, you got to see it. Like it's the one thing to hear these big numbers and then you go, wow, that's amazing. So, so I'll have you brought that up in a second. But what I wanted to frame up is that, you know, product launching is really hard, right? It's not got a fast return on investment when you're launching as much as you want it to. Like you, like I have product, I'm ready to sell it. And then sales trickle in, right? That's how it goes for a lot of people. So we have to utilize tools and things and we have to plan for them. I'm going to say that really loudly here, plan for them from the beginning as a part of our product launch strategy, because you can't run out of money when you've got this product in, right? You've got to have money for this marketing because it costs to play today. So talk a little bit about that. It's like there are challenges to launching products products, especially Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm glad you brought that up because so many, so many sellers, they, you know, building a list or having a launch audience becomes something that they think of down the road instead of being part of the core first thing. One of the first things that you think of, especially, you know, like whether you're selling direct via like your own website or you're launching on Amazon, for example, on Amazon, if you're launching a new product, there's, there's um, processes that you use to to launch with and you have to have a certain number of inventory that you're planning on pretty much giving away, right? Pretty much blowing out to be able to rank your product. And the biggest frustration I have is when I get on a call with somebody and they have like, you know, 500 units total, not even just in FBA, but total and, but they're launching in a highly competitive space and they're going to have to give away, you know, 400 product to be able to get launched. And I'm like, you got like, why even get launched if you're only going to have a hundred products to be able to sell at the end of it, you know? So you have to think strategically in how you're both, you know, how you're going to, you know, launch your product and then having enough product in stock to be able to, you know, invest in that. Yeah, they have to go hand in hand and that's why it, it has to be a plan to, from the beginning. So, you know, here's something that I, I um, uh, we talk about here and I, we haven't talked about this yet. I think, Michelle, I mean, we had, had a couple of conversations since um, so we had a conversation in Hong Kong. Neither of us probably remember and from Global Source. Right, right. But, you know, we also had one since then. But, you know, one of the things that we do here at Product Launch Hazards is we really um, go for the strategy that you should build your audience first. And yeah. I think that ties really well into what you are doing here. So whether that means that like I want to make and, and build this innovative, really cool juicer blender. And um, so today what I recommend to my clients is go find a juicer and a blender and sell them and build the audience on the ones that exist yeah. today while you're developing your others, number one, so that you're, the sales of the Juicer Blender is supporting your product development process. But two, so you're building the audience at the same time who has a, you know, cursory interest. They may not right, have an interest yeah. in the combined unit, but you have the right people in your, in your community at that point. So how could someone do that with what, what you're doing? Well, I think a lot of times people get a little intimidated when we talk about building a list, mm -hmm. right? It feels overwhelming. It feels, uh, you know, maybe they don't have the technical skills. They're scared of Facebook. They're super scared of Facebook ads. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so they're like, and they're scared of how much it's going to cost, right? They think yeah. it's like, well, how much is it going to cost to build this list? And I got to say in the, in the, the years that I've been doing launches with um, Messenger and building launch lists, because that's essentially what you're doing is building a launch list. Um, we figured out how to run campaigns in such a way that you can build a launch list of about 2,000 subscribers in less than two weeks for less than a dollar per subscriber, which is insane. That's crazy. So, right. Yeah. It's totally crazy. And the, our latest campaigns you know, are less than 50 cents per subscriber. So we're saying, you know, these, there's ways that you can do this. So you're not like breaking the bank. You're not having to like learn this new Facebook ad skill. You really don't because once you build a launch list and this is what's so cool about messenger is once you build that launch list, you don't ever have to do run Facebook ads ever again. You really do have this audience now, just like an email list where that you you have access to that you can, you know, promote and, and educate and, and inform your audience about your, your products, about, you know, cool uh, topics related to your products, not just like sell, 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 but information. So like the juicer blender scenario, what are people going to do with that? They need recipes. They need, you know, cool health 
you know, health benefits and, you know, so you can provide eBooks, you can provide blog posts, podcasts, you know, cool information to uh, prepare people so that they know like, Hey, these people are not just trying to sell me something. They, they really care about educating me on the benefits of, you know, of this product or this, you know, that I'm trying to put together. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so, you know, let's talk about numbers because I think this is really significant because when we say email lists, you can't do that with 2000 emails nowadays. You've got to have at least, you know, probably 10 times that minimum and maybe a hundred times that sometimes, you know, in certain areas. So, you know, so the numbers really aren't there. So let's go to your numbers. Yes. So let me see how to share my screen. It should say share down at the bottom. Oh yes, that bright green button. Yeah, that green button. No, this thing right in front of me. <laughs> technology, All right. Yeah. technology. Right. Let me just make sure that this is its own. So you don't have to see everything on my screen. <laughs> I know. I was like, I was like, you really don't want to see my screen. <laughs> <laughs> the terror that is my yeah. screen. Right. The, okay. the desktop is, is scary on some people's computers. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's, true. it's true. Not mine. It's just pictures of babies. <laughs> All right. Can you see my screen? All right. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Is it big enough? Do I need to go into presentation mode or is it? Um, no, it's pretty big. Okay. But you're welcome right. to go into presentation mode too, if, it, if you prefer. So, well, we'll just, we go. we'll just make it real. Ooh, yeah. There we go. There okay. Go. So one of the reasons why, and I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up, Tracy, about like an email, an email list of 2000 people, people will be like, really? That's it. Right. Because back in the day you'd have, it was like kind of this bigger, the bigger, the bigger, the better, right? Like, you know, 10,000 people, 50,000 people, a hundred thousand people on your email list. And the reason, the real reason why your email list had to be so massive is because the engagement, the engagement rates were such crap. And when I talk about the engagement rates, I'm talking about open rates and click through rates. So this is one of the sexy stats of messenger. And why I love it so much is you have, have on average a 90% open rate. Like, just, just, like, <laughs> like, well, I feel like we need like drum roll. Like, <laughs> right. Exactly. It's like, if I don't get, if I don't get a 90% open rate on my message, <laughs> I like, I get my feelings hurt, you know, like, well, and I think, I think the number 20% open rate on email list, like that's a good list. That's a that's really a good really list. Really good list. Right? right. And, but you know what? It's so, are so not where I see most of the lists that people are utilizing nowadays. I don't see them anywhere that now the difference though, that is that I have seen from our podcast, for instance, from our list here, we get closer to 40 to 50% oh, because right. it's so niche down and we're providing right. 90% content. They, they don't feel like they opted into something promotional. So I think that that's a little bit different. Um, but so what you would consider to be a service list, right? You're serving them content and you're serving right, them. And that's right. really, I think we'll talk that about that in a little bit, but I think that's really where you want to go and what you were mentioning about not just selling them stuff on their list, right? Exactly, That's exactly. And, and Facebook is trying to prevent that from being the case. You know, like I subscribed to Bath and Body Works because I like, you know, like I like their deals and whatever, but I cannot handle how many emails they send me. They send me like five emails a day, right? Yeah. Like, it, and they have to do that because only one every 10 days would I ever open. Right. Yeah. It's, not, you know, and so Facebook's trying to prevent that kind of, you know, that level of spamming to happen on their platform because they want to protect it. They want to make sure that it's maintained and protected as a, as an engagement platform, not as a spamming platform. And so, you know, you as a consumer is like, oh my gosh, I don't ever want to use messenger again because all these businesses are here. But guess what? Facebook has your back. They're protecting consumers, but business owners now, like you got to, when it comes to using messenger, you got to play by the rules or you could get yourself banned off of messenger. <laughs> Definitely. So, you got to play by the rules, but I think you also have to employ like really good marketing practices like you were talking about. Then absolutely. that's where your experience really comes in handy that, you know, that part of marketing relationship marketing hasn't changed. Right? Exactly. We exactly. Really- and we've been testing things so much over the last few years to see what works and what doesn't work. And of course the platforms are changing all the time too. So sometimes it's a game of whack-a-mole, you know, um, one of the, some other slides that are another thing I want to share with you guys is is this stuff. This stat is so crazy. We're talking when it comes to messengers, we have an average of a three second read time. So you think about an email list and, um, I read a report once that said that a recent report, it wasn't like, yeah. So a recent report was saying when you receive an email, you either read it within an hour of receiving it or never. 
<laughs> but, and, you, but, and never is probably more likely. So I know a lot of people, someone in this office right now who commits email bankruptcy about every 90 <laughs> days or so, which is for those of you who don't know what that is, that's when you like dump everything in your inbox yep. into, into some folder or into the trash. And you're like, well, right. it's important. They get back to me. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And that's how most people operate. I mean, there's going to be a few weirdos out there who are super, <laughs> Uh, myself included. I'm very much like, I'm, I like to clean I'm it up. I, like to- I have to tell you, I know I, there isn't a single email that I don't read, but I don't right. read them within an hour. That's so true. Though. Well, so the, the reality is, is that on a regular basis, you know, most people just do the, like the mass delete, you know, they just want to get rid of all of those notifications and, and all of those things. But with Messenger, you know, most people still have like their notifications open and they want to hear, they, they want to know when they get a message. So, so an average read time of three seconds versus emails, either hour or never, <laughs> you know, yeah. read time. So this is a really important stat and one of the things that I love so much about it. And the last one, um, not the last one, I do have one more that I want to share with you, but, um, you know, something that people are concerned about is migration off the platform, you know, oh my gosh, Facebook, you know, is selling my information or I'm worried about privacy or all of these things. And, you know, the reality is, is that Facebook is still the biggest game in town. They have over a billion users um, just on Messenger itself. So you think about that in, in the, the Messenger penetration of, of for your audience, if, if you worry that your audience or your customers are not on the platform, don't worry about it. They're there. <laughs> They're there <laughs> for sure. There. There's more plot. This is the biggest. Uh, aside from WeChat in China, Facebook Messenger is the biggest chat platform. So, d- Michelle, uh, do you happen to know the statistics of number of women on Facebook versus men? You know what? I don't. I don't. I, that I'm would sure be an interesting one because because this is one of the things that I talk about on the show and in my column all the time is that you know retail product sales are predominantly focused on women. Right. And so when we have 86% of purchases being bought or controlled by women, we want to be where women are hanging out. And so that's yeah. Facebook, that's Instagram. It's not as much LinkedIn. And, you know, like thinking about that, where do, where are they hanging out? And so, you know, to be, to miss out on that audience. That's crazy. Oh, totally. Totally. Absolutely. And I got to say, anytime our clients are trying to put, trying to target a specific type of audience, we're able to do that over and over again with Facebook. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. So <laughs> there's lots of niches in those niches there. There's <laughs> lots of niches in those niches. Okay. So the last stat that I want to show with you guys, um, and this comes from kind of that like FOMO where people are like, oh my gosh, this is so sexy, but crap, I've missed out on the opportunity. <laughs> you haven't. Um, on a, a, a recent uh, training um, for the platform that I use on top of Messenger. It's a marketing platform. It's called ManyChat. And they had a conference uh, in late fall last year. And the, uh, the Facebook Messenger uh, product managers came to this conference. So to get like somebody from Facebook to actually come to a conference is a very big deal. And so the, the Facebook gods arrived. <laughs> they were there. And one of the stats that they shared was that only 1% of business businesses on Facebook are actually even connected to their messenger, um, to have messenger connected on their Facebook business page, which I mean, that's not even talking bots. That's just saying like somebody could message your business and ask you a question, right? Or if they have a customer, customer service issue or something like that. It's only 1% of businesses are even using and connect it right it's like wow that's so low cool. hanging yeah. fruit people you know yeah. low hanging fruit you don't want customer service issues on your on your Facebook page you want that you know you want somebody to message you and like you know let you know if there's something they can help you with so you know when it comes to the product adoption curve we're not even in like cutting edge we're in the bleeding edge of yeah. product adoption curve and and you know sometimes with bleeding edge there's a reason why it's called bleeding edge and that's because there's blood everywhere because everybody's learning how to use this for the first time you know and uh and sometimes we make mistakes and sometimes we have really awesome wins and it's it's, it's this process of figuring out what's working what's not working and uh and and like i said where we've been doing this for two years now we're pretty much in the flow of consistently having the same process over and over again because we're figuring out what works, right? Yeah, so absolutely. If, if people are concerned about like, 
did I miss the boat? No, <laughs> the, boat, the boat is still in the dock. Please, please join <laughs> us. At least, you know, turn on the messenger connection between your business page and your, you know, your subscribers or people coming to your page so that they can message you. And then check out platforms like ManyChat to start building these automations um, so that you can, you know, start to build your, build your subscriber base and, and build that launch list. So, so let's, uh, let's pop out of this now. And so I can just talk about you because, you know, this is what you do every day. Uh, this is, um, you know, you have courses, you have groups, you have programs, like this is what yes. you do. And, you know, the th interesting thing is this, I was like, I had expected when I met you, it'd be like this full consulting done for you service. And it's really not. And, and it became really clear to me from talking with you. Um, I think you just have to sh stop sharing. <laughs> stop sharing. Stop sharing. There it is. Sorry guys. Sorry. Okay. I am very technically advanced. <laughs> no, it's, Zoom it's is there's my... something about Zoom that always what confounds all of us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, it's like, it's not intuitive or something. And, um, but anyway, yeah, I mean, you, you know, this is the thing at the, at the end of the day, I really realized that I was like, well, why isn't she offering this done for you? I'd be like, just let me pay you, do it for me. Right. <laughs> but what I realized is that you have to have so much input from your clients that you have to have so much core knowledge on the product and your messaging has to be done by you at the end of the day or done by your team. If you've got a team of people but it has to be done by you. It's not something you can do for them, but the principles of how it all works and how you do it, right. that you can guide them on. So talk about your, your club. I mean, that's what you call it. So yeah, <laughs> my, I was like, club. Club. my cool kids club. Yeah, I, absolutely. So, I mean, and you're spot on. I, I can't be a product expert on your product, right? Like I, th that's, that's, that's for the client. That's for my clients to, you know, to be able to, you know, right. You've sourced this product. You've, in, you've invested so much time and energy and, and, uh, and it's your baby, right? Like yeah. it's, not, it's not my baby. It's your baby. So, <laughs> but like you said, we've, we've established the best practices and we figured out what, what works, um, consistently to get our clients results. And so really when it comes down to it, you know, our, our process is really about um, building that launch list, building your subscriber base, and then um, creating engagement so that you can, you know, if you're an Amazon seller, rank your products, harvest reviews, drive, you know, drive revenue. If you're, if you're selling direct, developing a relationship with your customers, yeah. with your subscribers, converting them over into, uh, to customers, and then just continuing that relationship. And, you know, uh, something to keep in mind is that, you know, different products are going to need different kind of marketing solutions. Right. right. And, and typically what I see is the more expensive the product, the longer the nurture. Right. And that's, that's kind of marketing one one you know, so a product that is, is disposable and cheap and, and people can respond to like a, like a great deal where it's like a 50% off offer and the product is like seven bucks at that point. Like it's kind of a no brainer for a lot of people, but if you're offering, you know, if you sell a $250 product and you're doing a buy one, get one free, well, guess what? That's still $250 that people have to invest in. So what I'm getting at is <clears throat> this is not like a silver bullet platform. This is not a do it once and reap all of the, the rewards. You have to have a long-term perspective and a long-term investment attitude when it comes to building a subscriber base and building a relationship with an audience that you can uh, have this, this give and take with. It's not just this one-time thing. And, 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 and you have to be careful that because some marketing tactics are very much like, oh, this new cool thing, I just got to try it out real quick. Well, guess what? When you do that, you invest money and you get very little in return because it was a short term, you know, it was a short, like a, a quick fix that you were looking for. And we all know what right. quick fixes result in. <laughs> That's right. right. Uh, shame and regret. <laughs> That's right. Big, big shame and regret. So, you know, so this is really interesting, Michelle, because, you know, when, as I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking that, you know, our product launch hazards group here is probably better suited to what you're doing than some of the Amazon sellers I, I speak to all the time because mm -hmm. those Amazon sellers who are like all over the place in all the different types of product arenas and areas that they're in, where if you're in a very niche area, you're offering an innovation, you, you're building a passionate brand around something, you are more likely to be able to build that long-term relationship and yeah. be able to nurture that list and, and get more value from that for both you and for your customers. Right, exactly. The, the type of sellers that this benefits, this strategy benefit the best, Amazon private label sellers, not, we're not wholesaling, we're not arbitrage, it's private label, you're wanting to build a brand both on Amazon and off Amazon, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. As well as uh, sellers who are selling direct, you know, you have your Shopify or your Magento store or some, some, you know, process where you're like, I want people to know, like, and trust me, my brand, my products, not just Amazon or not just Walgreens, you know? Right. And the thing is, is it's great for e-commerce sellers who are doing direct sales too. So, I mean, you can start really, you know, launching a product off your, off, uh, off of Amazon. You can really drive traffic direct to you. Um, and that's yeah. a great benefit too, especially if you have a product line launch strategy mm -hmm. where you're really going to be expanding and offering a bigger program over time. This makes sense because you now really have a nurtured list in that, in that area. Right, exactly. Health and wellness like we were using before as an example. Yeah, absolutely. I have a lot of, I have a lot of private label sellers who are on Amazon, but also want to build that direct list as well. And just because you start with building your list, you, you building up your subscriber base and used to sending them to your Amazon store, doesn't mean at any time you can't send them to a new link, right? <laughs> you can't send them to it. And, it, and, it, and I think it's even better that way because, you know, if you're building a, a subscriber base from cold traffic, like Facebook ads, you know, they don't know you yet, but they do know Amazon. And and so if you're sending them to your product listing on Amazon, they're familiar with that. They like their prime, they can read reviews, you know, all of those things. But then once they become your customer and they've bought your product, guess what? Then, then they know, like, and trust you, you've piggybacked and leveraged that brand, um, that brand power that Amazon has. And now you've leveraged it on your own behalf and your subscriber list is, is more likely to buy from you in the future, even if you're selling direct. <laughs> I love that. Well, we teased everyone talking about some of the new stuff coming on on Instagram. And, you know, this is, I, we're seeing a lot of product sales happening on Instagram. Um, I interviewed um, Gary V uh, a, a couple months ago, and he said he can't spend enough money on Instagram. <laughs> he wishes there were more influencers so he could spend more like that. And he was spending like $100,000 a month on ads and killing it because he was doing millions of dollars of his shoe product over that. So, you know, uh, I thought that was so interesting. So what's going on over there that we, we want to know about this year and we want to pay attention to? Well, Instagram is not my area of focus or expertise in general. Like I said, there's too many, right? The umbrella is so large. But one of the things from a product, uh, you know, a product perspective, you know, influencer marketing is, is still important. Those people who have their reach, their audiences, right? Um, but one of the opportunities that you have with that is, you know, partnering with those people to build your own audience, build your own list your Instagram following or your Facebook following. And some, an interesting statistics that I was reading the other day is that people will follow you on Instagram, but buy on Facebook. <laughs> That's Instagram, interesting. Because Instagram is the pretty place, right? It's not the place for the ads and the political discussions and all of these things. So it's do, the place do you, you find people going from Instagram to Facebook messenger? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And pretty soon there's going to be, pla there are platforms that are really, that are becoming released for Instagram direct message. So everything that we're doing on Messenger to be able to automate It'll marketing there, there will, well, it's not there yet. We're getting there, but it's coming. So what I tell That's people is <laughs> start your campaign, start building your subscribers and, and building kind of these campaigns with your messenger list and then, and then start to test and replicate that experience when the platform becomes more, uh, I guess, like out of beta and into like the real time um, so that you're ready. You're ready for those like automated direct message type of relationships. Interesting. And you know, this is the thing about Instagram that, you know, your Instagram guys can go straight back into your Facebook from the content standpoint. So, right. 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 So if you start thinking about your Instagram as your content service place, right? So the yep. few pretty photos, the like cool stories, interesting quotations, like, you know, nurturing that audience through story and messaging mm -hmm. from the visual standpoint, like thinking about that and then pulling that back in, back in through Facebook, it's also going to help attract people to yeah. join you on Messenger. Yeah, because you can you can target your Instagram followers in your Facebook ads that are promoting your message, you know, that, that end up in your messenger subscriber list. So I mean that's kind of advanced They're stuff. Intimate. But I mean yeah. it's it's all oh well when Facebook owns the platform, they can do whatever they want, right? right. So right. and it's only a matter of time because they own WhatsApp as well. So <laughs> there's lots of it's all intermingled. So, you know, if you're, if you're trying to target and, and I like that, I like that you're saying build the content presence on Instagram and have those followers and then market the crap out of it on Facebook ads and go just yeah. go convert them into messenger subscribers. Cause the reality is, is that 
a follower and a fan are, are just vanity stats until they become messenger subscribers because messenger subscribers means you own them and you can, um, because the, the reality is, is that with the, with, you know, with your content on social media platforms like Facebook, you know, the algorithm will only feed your story to their newsfeed, like two to 5% of the time organically. So, and if you boost a post, it goes up to like 15 to 20%. But guess what? If you get somebody as a messenger subscriber, they will see your content 100% of the time. Yeah, so, that's awesome. Cause that's what we I'm really just going to close with that. I'm just yeah. going to like, just, I'm so, going to leave that there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, please. That's awesome. So yeah, you know, so, so I, you know, I'm not, I, I'm one of these people who doesn't love, um, at, Facebook Messenger like popped it up messages because so many people abuse it. And I remember when you were in Hong Kong, you talked about some of like the good guidelines to how do you really do make sure that you're not doing that. And because that's my fear is that what happens is, and it has happened in other areas of Facebook. So my fear is that what happens is you should get so many messages mm -hmm. so often. And so much of that message becomes irrelevant. It becomes like what's going on in email. And then we turn right, off our so notification right. and we say, forget this and we don't use it anymore. And, or what happens to me is I get so many messages in, in messenger from people, you know, want to interview me or want me to interview them or doing all of these things. And I, but I don't always, I, I view it and I see it, but I don't always respond right away because I've got to get another link or do something. And then they get buried down in that list. And I forgot about them because once they're no longer active notifications, they're not active anymore. Right. right so it's right. a little bit different than flagging an email. And so that's also another thing, the more content we get through messenger, the worse it can end up being. So let's talk about some guidelines because you have some great, great guidelines. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, I really like to use the platform as a notification system. So kind of like, kind of like how you have like your, your apps will like pop up and notify you on your smartphone, the apps that you've left on <laughs> notifications on, um, th like you want them to be like the most important thing that, that they can be. It shouldn't be just like, you know, telling your life story or those kinds of things. That's what email is for. In fact, yeah. with, with messenger campaigns, you can make it so you can build your email. Uh, you can bring somebody in as a messenger subscriber and an email subscriber at the same time. And so I genuinely recommend having both and having that multi-channel experience so that when somebody comes an email subscriber, they get your welcome series. You get, you know, an email per day for six weeks or whatever it looks like. But with messenger, I don't want you to do that. I want you to do like, you know, up to one message, per week. So see you guys nice and low. Let's think about this because yes. it's also not as much work. Right. Exactly. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because with email, you're writing like all of this copy, right? And it's just like, uh, and you're, you're writing a short little message for, here. Right. Exactly. With messenger, it's like, Hey, we got a new post up about X, Y, Z click with the link below to get, you know, to check it out. It really is just like a quick thing or, Hey, we have a new product that we're launching. It's going to be a crazy crazy good deal for a short period of time. Click below if you want to hear about when it's, when the deal is live. And what I like about that as well is that it's permission marketing. Um, anytime that you can, you know, give people a choice and whether they want to engage with you or not is like a winning opportunity. And people would be like, yeah, but what about those people who say no? And I'm like, well, you don't want them on your list. Like, <laughs> why do you want people on your list who don't, who aren't interested in your products? You know, at least, you know, after a period of time, you'll get a really good feel for those people who are good, um, who are the type of subscribers you want to have on your list. And it's just good, uh, messenger, uh, interaction anyway, to be able to let, make it easy for people to unsubscribe. So they don't like block or delete your conversations because then Facebook will flag those and yeah. get too many of those and you get blank and you get banned. Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, this is something that was just, so I want to frame this for those people who are in the product development. There's a reason I brought Michelle on and that is that it's like the marketing can't wait till the end. Number one, you guys know, I say that all the time, but there's also another opportunity for how you might use your list right now. Um, use your messenger list. Okay. I hate, I hate calling a list because then it sounds like it's not good. Your subscribers. Your, your subscribers, your community, yeah. right? Yeah. So, but there's a way. So, so let's say we go back to that juicer blender example. Now we've got 2000 people who are interested in, you know, interested in either a juicer or a blender. And I've got my new model. I've got my new prototype. Now I have something to say, Hey, I'd like some feedback from you. Yeah. Now you yeah. can invite them into your development conversation. You can invite them into your pricing discussion. Like, is this too much to pay? Is this perfect? You know, you can invite them into what colors am I going to make this thing? Yeah. You know, now you have an audience because what I always want you guys to get is market proof that people will buy what you have to sell, not 
market proof from the standpoint of, I think I like it and my family likes it and I sold a few here, but you know, it, I was presenting it every time, right? We've got to find a group who's bought from you because they've spent money. So now they were willing to plunk down dollars before. Now let's have a conversation with them. And you know, right. that's really where I think you could really be utilizing your list for future product development as well. And it would be much easier than trying to run an email survey. Yeah, absolutely. So let me show you something really quick. Sorry, I was like, no, nope, that's okay. Good. Because I want to show you this when you bring in real time. I'm going to share, share a campaign with you. So, do you guys see that? Yep. All right. So, this is the client who has, who sells optics. So, like binoculars uh, for bird watchers. And so, this is an example of a, like a broadcast that went out where somebody had just joined the subscriber list for like, I think they were signed up for an ebook and we wanted to learn about them fairly quickly afterwards. And, um, you know, for one thing with these stats, I just love them so much. When was the last time you got like, you know, 85% open rate, 50% click. click. Rate, That's you know? awesome. And, and I mean, technically it's a survey, right? Yeah. But like, when was the last time you like, you know, some, some, but some store that you were buying things for sent you a survey and you were like, well, why? Well, yes, I will take this survey. You know, like you're like, <laughs> oh, get out. I don't want to, you know, but it's so fun. It's so but we fun. take polls all the time in Facebook. Like people do it all the time. Yeah. Polls are different. Polls are different. Yeah. They're fun. Um, so so essentially what we were trying to find out is, is learn about this audience and, and see well, who are these people because they have different levels of products that they sell, beginner, intermediate, and advanced kind of optics as well as price points. So here we're learning of their subscriber base, you know, almost 40% are beginners. Um, they're not traveling to do bird watching. Most of them are just doing it in their backyard. And, and you know, 34% of them are, you know, like almost 50% of the subscribers are mostly interested in optics, um, you know, of $200 or less. So from a product development standpoint, that's really important information at least from your, you know, messenger standpoint and the audience that you build standpoint, if all of a sudden this client decided they wanted to go luxury and start doing, you know, competing with like the big brands that are selling, uh, you know, the, the optics for 2000, 5,000, $10,000. Well, guess what? Their audience is not interested in those types of products. So, you know, it's not to say that they can't do that, but the audience in this launch list that they built are not the, the people that they're not interested in those types of optics. These people are really going to give you that kind of feedback on, on what kind of products they're interested in, the types of, um, you know, the types of, the types of price points that they're they're looking to buy at, and so this information is so important and crucial because in the future, like we're tagging these people, so we know um, we know this information about them. So if we're sending broadcasts in the future for like a two hundred dollar plus. Uh, you know, optic or product, we're probably, it'd probably be best suited just to send it to these people who've expressed interest in that, you know, that type of product. So from a survey perspective, you know, this took them probably like less than 30 seconds to do. And, <laughs> and you can see from like the click through rate that the drop off was very low. So, you know, people, people started it, they finished it. Right. Yeah. So it was, awesome. uh, it's really great information from a product development standpoint and easy to set up, easy to use, um, and to be able to segment your audience in, in the future for future marketing campaigns. Oh, I love this, Michelle. This is so great. Uh, drop yourself out so we can, we can do a little close with your face. <laughs> yes, absolutely. There we there go. go. I figured it out. <laughs> yeah, I've got, got the Zoom thing down now, right as we end. <laughs> so, so Michelle, I, you know, we, we, all your information is going to be in productlaunchhazards.com. So there's going to be a profile for Michelle. You'll be able to find her. You'll be able to connect into her club. It's called the Amazon messenger Amazon options. messenger bot club and we do bot have e-commerce we have it's not just for Amazon sellers we do have e-commerce templates in there as well I think we released 12 for the just the holiday season back in December so I mean we're cranking stuff out all the time for our e-commerce people like you who are selling products you know and want to use messenger to do it yeah exactly so you know so, so there's a lot of resources there of all price points so this is like a learning platform you can dive deeper you can get some more hands-on help like there's a whole bunch of stuff there I you know I, I bring you the these things because I want you to experience them early. I don't want you to wait till the end. I want you to go in early and start to understand and think about, am I going to, because you can make some different decisions in your product development cycle and in your launching plan 
when you say, I have this at my access, I'm capable of using this, this is going to be the right choice to make. And so thinking about these things early, it's really not too early for you to explore them and get in there and check out our group and, and start learning about what you could be doing here. Yeah. And for those of us who are like already past that, it's not too late either because Michelle right. Stat just showed us, hey, we're, we're on the, we're like really less than 1% of the people. <laughs> that is astounding, Michelle. And if you already have an email list and a Facebook audience and an Instagram followers, even better because then you don't have to go to cold traffic to, to bring people onto your messenger platform. You can start to harvest people from the, from your email list, from your, from your Instagram and your Facebook followers and get them into your messenger so that you can get those sexy engagement rates, you know, that, that we're seeing on the I platform. I love that. An early return on investment because that's isn't right. that what our product launchers that's really right. want at the end of the day. <laughs> well, Michelle, it's been such a joy having you here. I'm so glad. I know we'll come back as new things start to change. We'll definitely want you to come back and do an update for us and let us know when, you know, there's always algorithm changes, stuff happens. All the time, all the time. <laughs> all the time I'm like, yeah. What has happened in the last 30 minutes? That's right. That's why you need an expert in your corner, right? That's why we're all about the right things in the right order with the right resources here at Product Launch Hazards. And this is one of those right resources, guys. So glad I was able to bring her to you today. Thank you, Tracy. Thanks so much for having yeah. me. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And we'll be back next time with another Product Launch Hazard expert.